So what's up guys, it's time I promise you this video in which I will explain you the difference between bulk density and solid density of the catalyst. So let me just go back. And why are we seeing this is because we want to change the differential of length of the back bed. So let's say DC, C1, C0 into mass of catalyst. Remember here we have little pellets which have a mass of catalyst and since our equation is conversion versus mass we need to change it we don't want C but we want mass of catalyst so essentially we are going to change it do you know that mass can be modeled as density times the volume so we need to find that volume and use a specific density not the common one or at least if you want to use the common one, well, you need to account for the blank spaces here. So, the solid density is the one you're used to. Uh, I use this like normal one or the one you know is the total mass of that substance divided by the total volume occupied by that substance. So what, uh, what do I say, when, or what do I mean when I say vo uh, total volume is this you were to add all these spherical volumes you will get the actual volume occupied by that mass because you know here we have some air or maybe some fluid you know this is no mass of catalyst so accounting for that will be kinda you will get a lower density for example if you have this cylinder and you just say well this is the height the area of my reactor and that's the total volume uh, that's true but that's the total volume of the reactor not the volume occupied by the pellets so the, the density we're used to is actually we're going to use density of C or the catalyst is the mass of the catalyst so all these grams of catalyst divided by the actual volume that they occupy uh, now we're going to use bulk density because it's easier. Let's see. Let's say it's easier to model it. Yeah. When we use bulk, we can use our let's say our definition of mass equals rho or density times volume. This volume here. But the thing here is that we will not be measuring this. We can measure it, yes, actually, it's not that difficult, but we will be measuring the whole volume of the reactor here. So if we want to do that we need to account for the blank spaces. So don't just have mass and the total volume. No, this will be a different density, the solid density. So it actually makes sense to make a bulk density. It's a special, let's say the, vo the total volume of the reactor uh, and the total mass in that. So let's say we are accounting for this space, so that's why we have this relationship between the bulk density and the solid density. This is the difference or the spaces. Actually, I like it to do it more into volume. Like here, you have this is the actual solids, and this is the volume. So we're actually correcting the volume. So we want to know the actual volume of the of the pellets. So let's say the total volume you know it's essentially just the area of that circle times the height. So you know the whole reactor is that. If you want to know the total volume will be the area which it will be here and the height of that C. But what if we just we know it's uh, 1 minus epsilon we know epsilon or the actual blank spaces are, I don't know, 50%. So you know that the actual volume will be 50%. You need 1 minus 0 0.5 will give you another 50%. 0 0.5. And that means that the actual volume of pellets is one half of that total volume. Volume of pellets. And we will use total volume for bulk density, rho b and we will be using the volume of the pellets for that density of the catalyst. So this one is a easy example. But let's say this is 
and the other one will be of course 80 percent so you know that the volume of the pellets will never be uh, more than the actual volume so you cannot put more volume of pellets in this in the small or in a smaller volume of the reactor so you know at least this volume is way uh, lower or it's not that much as the total volume so hopefully you get the idea um, the bulk density is always less that than of the, sol the solid one the solid one is always let's say where is it yeah here is it because there is a difference so if you got maybe this you have no blank spaces the only case in which the density uh, of or bulk density is equal to the total density is when we have no blank spaces that means our pellets are so pulverized that they actually occupy all this space there are no spaces between pellets or litter pieces so actually you are you destroying that much that even here you have more more pellets but that is not that normal it's actually not usual we actually have huge pellets like one centimeter or so and if you've been working with I don't know maybe small uh, marbles or so you will see that when you get them together you always get these little spaces here so in general the density or bulk density will be always lower or less than the solid density and why do I put here this porosity thing is because the bulk density actually takes that into consideration this is the porosity but the solid density doesn't uh, makes use of that because you the solid density is the actual density of the material it doesn't care if it's porous or not porous you just have the total mass which doesn't care if you have uh, porous materials or so and the total volume of that material let's say of pellets you don't care if they are porous or not so yeah essentially we are using this once again to get this here a relationship between the differential of length of the bed and the differential of mass of the bed and how do, do, uh, do we do this is by density so hopefully you get the idea and once again keep with your good equation until we get to the final equation and this is what we're going to see in the next video how, how are we going to have our final model and how to solve it so see you in the next video What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.